Welcome back to this XRP update. I have so much cool news to go over with you. Flare is moving to Dubai. Also some partnership announcements. We're going to be talking about Larry Fink on Bloomberg, talking about DLT stocks and bonds, all of this market moving over to DLT. I also have a clip from a little bit ago, but telling you where this is all going with Swift using XRP. Uh, I also have a clip here from David Schwartz talking about micropayments. This is going to be a great video. I will try to keep it to the point. I will add some feedback where I see fit. I hope you are enjoying 2024. What a historic week we have had in crypto. It is very exciting to see the spot Bitcoin ETF come out. Sure, the market is down right now, but it is really the start of something truly game changing and transformative in the digital asset space. And I'm very, very excited to be here early before the institutions got in. So let's start, let's get into this. Uh, first off, I'm uh, happy to announce that we have uh, received a developer's uh, grant from, from Flare, uh, which really allows us to uh, uh, fine tune and enhance our app. Uh, as we speak, we have a security audit ongoing for our staking module. So there are preparations being made for the app asset uh, system with integration of additional uh, blockchains. And apart from that, version 3 will also include uh, the automated market maker for the XRP. There you go. Uh, of course, depending on uh, the vote that is currently ongoing. Now, besides this, uh, Solidify is also expanding uh, massively uh, behind the scenes. And I think uh, Solidify is really a space to watch in 2024. I think the things that we're building on is, uh, uh, yeah, I think the community will really, really love it. Um, and as Flare grows, Solidify will also grow along with it. It's, uh, Solidify is also setting up uh, multiple companies in uh, various jurisdictions. Um, and when I say companies, I'm talking about compliance first, uh, highly capable fintech startups that all around, uh, revolve around uh, the Solidify brand and the blockchain technology. And uh, the XRP Ledger and the Flare Network will be uh, central uh, to these companies. Now, I cannot give too many details on this yet, uh, but this is, of course, uh, very exciting. Uh, one thing that I do can uh, that I can already say is that we're looking at uh, bringing a um, uh, big utility to the XRP Ledger for business solutions. Uh, we're currently That's what we need. Talks with the DIFC in uh, Dubai and uh, are talking with the regulators there and uh, and actually planning to set up an office uh, right next to Ripple. Strong. And uh, yeah, bringing business to the XRP ledger. Dubai is of course a phenomenal place uh, with regulations uh, already in place yep. uh, for the crypto industry. Uh, so we aim to do a lot there and we'll be linking all the companies uh, that we're building, um, you know, back to Flare and the XRP ledger and offer the community, uh, which includes all communities that come to the Flare Network, a full financial ecosystem. And um, yeah, the Solidify team is, is ready uh, for the coming time. We're closely watching the development and expansion, uh, expansion of the Flare Network and, uh, and bring the best possible user experience uh, to the entire community. The last three years, right? If you look at XRP and the growth of the token, it really hasn't been there, but we're too focused on the today's price of the token and we're not focused on what the protocol solves globally, right? That I'm not here to make a quick dollar. Sure, you know, investing in some tokens, making a hundred percent return. That's that's good. And, that's good and fun. But I'm really here to make generational, life-changing wealth, and that's going to take some time. And I've accepted that. I am prepared to wait. While I'm waiting, I'm investing in other assets, and I talk about that on my channel all the time. If you have any questions, please reach out and let me know. But what I'm waiting for is institutions and all of this value to get tokenized. And that's really where price discovery is going to come from. It's not gonna come from you and me speculating on a token, hoping and praying it goes up and swearing when it doesn't. That's not helpful. We need to focus in on what's actually being built, right? What's coming and, and make our decisions for our lives and plan accordingly. Because if you listen to this clip that I'm about to play, you will see the roadmap. And we've talked about this for years on this channel, okay? I've talked about this for years. And when Larry Fink is out here on Bloomberg telling you that, that the stock and the bond market is all moving to DLT, one ledger, let's have a conversation about that. Check this out. Moving to ETFs, how far does it go? 
When we bought BGI in 2009, <clears throat> we were ridiculed by most of the financial community for saying you cannot marry the culture of an active investor, that who, what, who we were, and a, and a passive culture. And we said, why? Our clients use both products. Our job is to be agnostic to our clients, to work with our clients, and to provide a whole portfolio solution. But over time, more and more clients started to think about how do I want to get an exposure? Do I want an exposure in this area or this product? And I can do that through actively investing in ETFs. In 2012, we said ETFs are going to be the new engine for fixed income. And boy, did that get a lot of ridicule by many people in the business community. And today, the fixed income markets are totally uh, imbued by ETFs. And so at BlackRock, when we bought BGI, we had $290 billion of ETFs. Today we have $3.5 trillion. Um, is, and, and then this week alone, just yesterday, we launched the iShares Bitcoin ETF. And so I would say to you, if we could ETF a Bitcoin, imagine what we could do with all financial instruments. We announced in our architectural change, iShares was this um, was this business division in itself, and we thought that's too, in, in, you know, too exclusive. We needed to include the ethos, the philosophy, the spirituality of what iShares can provide in everything we do at BlackRock, because we believe we're we're just halfway there in the ETF revolution, that everything is going to be ETF'd, and we needed to ensure both active products, passive products. Um, digital products are going to be used through the vehicle of ETFs. Check this out. At the same time, in this architectural change, we're elevating the whole concept that we are going to be curating more and more of our performance-based products, too. So it's a, it's a very large architectural change. A lot of people have asked me, iShares is the most successful division within BlackRock. Look what it did. Why are you doing this now? And we believe it's so important to be anticipating the next move. I would also say on the, on the beginnings of, um, of a ETF Bitcoin, we believe ETFs are a technology no different than Bitcoin was a technology for, for asset storage. We believe the next step going forward will be the tokenization of financial assets. And that means every stock, every bond will have its own basically QCIP. It'll be on one general ledger. Every investor, you and I, will have our own number, our own identification. Hold on. It'll be on one general ledger. Now, let's just take a second and, and talk about this because I felt like that was a very important statement. Now, if you look at the past 10 years in crypto technology, in DLT, right? You know, let's even take a look at the top. If you're going to use one ledger, all right, and you look at the top 10 cryptos here, right? Can't be Bitcoin. We know Bitcoin is not uh, going to be used for tokenization of stocks and bonds. It's too expensive. It's too slow. It'll never work. Ethereum, the gas fees that are paid on Ethereum could go to bad actors. Banks are not going to take that risk. We know it's not going to be Ethereum. Now, they could use a private version of Ethereum and do some stuff in the background. Ethereum does have a lot of liquidity. That could be a solution. BNB? Yeah. <laughs> no, stop it. Uh, Solana? Listen, XRP has been around for 11 years. They've done over a trillion dollars in value that's been transacted on the network. There's been no issues. You have 30 plus central banks testing the technology, right? You have uh, the US government, you have the UK government, Japan, right? Australia, you have all of these different governments that have been testing this technology. The XRP and Ripple really have been on the forefront of this whole change into the digitization and tokenization. Sure, there's going to be other winners, XLM, Algorand. Um, there's going to be several other projects that are going to win. But if we're talking about one shared ledger, why wouldn't you want all of the stocks, bonds, derivatives? Why wouldn't you want all of that being traded on the same ledger that the central banks are going to have their CBDCs on? I'll ask you that question because it makes sense to me that they're going to choose the technology that central banks are comfortable with, right? Because at the end of the day, those are the people that are going to make the decisions on where all of this stuff is going to be housed and stored. And 
what XRP Ledger needs, right? We went through three years of really not a lot of development happening because of the lawsuit, right? Developers were kind of, uh, you know, they didn't feel comfortable developing on the XRP Ledger because of what was going on with the lawsuit. Now that that's gone and done, you have Flare Networks, you have Hooks, and you have Evernote. When you have smart contract functionality coming onto the XRP Ledger as, as, as Ethereum does, why wouldn't it be XRP? Until I see central banks moving away from the technology, until they say, you know what, this is awful. I hate paying a penny to move a payment instantly. I will adjust and shift my thought process and I will tell you that live when it happens. But until then, I do think XRP is the prime technology that you should be paying attention to. And that's why I talk about it the most on this channel. We could rid ourselves of all issues around illicit activities about bonds and stocks and digital by having a, 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 a tokenization. But the most important thing, we can customize strategies through tokenization that is, if it's every individual. We would have instantaneous settlement. Think about all the costs of settling bonds and stocks. But if you had a tokenization, everything would be immediate because it's just a line item. And so we believe this is a technological transformation for financial assets. I believe if you want to talk about voting and voting choice and all the things, if, every, if we know every moment who is the owner of that stock and it's now time to vote, every individual who has ownership is identified and they can vote their own shares. Is this the end of mutual funds? I think, well, a lot of people, it's... it's Evolution? Rapper, it's not the end of it, but I would say the dominant form of bringing products going forward will be in the form of, of ETF. Now, is an XRP ETF in the cards? Is it coming? Well, there's a clip floating around Twitter that maybe he's not going to answer the question directly, but I'll let you decide what he's thinking here. I think the advent of Bitcoin ETFs is an example that we're legitimizing it. We're creating more safety. Well, let me ask you this. Will you do another ETF? How about an XRP ETF? I know you got e Ether out there. I, we, How about XRP? Can we, you answer that? I can't. <laughs> we, How about XRP? Can you answer that? I can't. <laughs> they usually don't talk about things before they happen, right? Before they're announced, right? All right, so uh, there's a few clips I want to play here. Uh, I'll save the, this one for last since it's an old clip. Uh, this is Marcus Fenger. Uh, this could be, I, I do think I played this clip a few months ago, but it kind of speaks to what we're talking about here. Let me play this for you. And so look, Ripple, you know, since pretty much the beginning has been about how can we make this technology matter today in the real economy and not just somewhere in an isolated crypto world, so to speak. And so we had to abstract away some of the complexities of blockchain technology, but also use elements of intermediation, right? And so combining elements of like CFI and DeFi, if you will, to offer something that works today, that is regulatory compliant. And uh, here we are, we're facilitating billions of dollars of payments every year. Regulatory compliant. Those are the two words you need to keep in the back of your head. What asset in the United States is regulatory compliant? It's XRP. In a matter of seconds, to hundreds of customers um, in 70 markets uh, globally, instead of days before, right? And their secret sauce is really the underlying technology, which is, uh, in our case, the XRP ledger. The protocol. It's been facilitating 2.6 billion transactions, over a trillion dollar of value since 11 years with security incidents. It's really built for institutional grade use cases with native primitives and so forth. Uh, and so it shows like, you know, it manifests, hey, this is working, but at the same time, um, there's still a long ro road ahead. To there is a long road. From the billions of economic volumes uh, uh, in a year into the trillions. Mm -hmm. So again, it's usability, it's fragmentation of liquidity that's also prevalent in blockchain technology and it's uh, regulatory, like user protection, regulatory compliance. There you go. I, I, I couldn't have put it better myself. And then this is David Schwartz talking about micropayments, why they're so important and why the world is going to move towards micropayments and how it's going to be easier to move value around the world. The same is true of ILP. We can innovate both below it and above it. Um, but the main point that I want to make is that ILP is a micropayment technology. Over a billion ILP payments in 2018. Uh, and there's a reason that's important. You can do everything with a micropayment. Micropayments are kind of like packets. If you think about the way the internet works, it sends a packet to its destination with the best effort. ILP does the same thing. The smarts are at the endpoints, 
and the same thing is true with ILP. So if I want to send somebody $100, I can just sort of start streaming money at them. ILP is interledger protocol, if you didn't know. If it gets to $100, I can stop. And that is better for a number of reasons. If you're going to make a payment in one shot, you need to get a quote. But do you get a free quote or do you pay for the quote? If you get a free quote, it's going to be a terrible quote because you've got a free option. If you're going to pay for the quote, how many quotes do you pay for? Do you just pay for one and then take it? Do you pay for five quotes and only take one of them? When you stream micropayments, when you make payments by micropayments, you can stream that payment through multiple, through multiple forwarders. And those individual forwarders can stream that payment through multiple forwarders. And you can take advantage of that best path. And if the path is really good, you can stream money faster. And if the path is really bad, you can stream money more slowly. And the net effect is, is that you can manage a payment as a series of micropayments. And I know that sounds kind of crazy to you guys today, but if we lived in the, the circuit switch days of telecom, packet switch, like sending a telephone call or packet switching would sound just as crazy, but it's just as innovative. Uh, if we can develop micropayments that are as cheap as a DNS request, we, we, micropayments can take over the world. We can, put all of, we can put all of the world's payments on a modern payment platform that interoperates between both blockchain and non-blockchain value. Uh, Interledger payments plus digital assets could be that internet of value, that way to move value all around the world. Thank you. It's not on the token price. It is the underlying protocol that is going to reshape the world. I will leave you with this final clip. This is actually a little bit older. If you're not subscribed to the channel, guys, I'm trying to grow to 40,000 subscribers this year, and I can't do it without you. If you come back and you watch multiple videos, please think about subscribing. It does help me get in front of more amazing people like you, and I would really, really appreciate it. Also, I have just built out a half a million dollars in passive income in the last two months. I've shared all the things I'm doing in the Cryptonaires Discord. If you want to come into that community and learn how I am making six to seven figures a year in crypto, please think about signing up. There's a link for a free seven days down in the description. We would love to have you around the community. Let me end with this and uh, I'll let you go for today. There's a discussion um, surrounding crypto replacing SWIFT. So we did speak yeah. earlier where you mentioned that it's not necessarily about replacing SWIFT, it's about complementing it. So let's get some more information on this. Okay. I used to work for Swift. I was Swift for 20 years, so Swift is flowing through my veins. Swift is the pre preeminent messaging system for the financial industry, which covers, say, payments, FX, trade in, in terms of uh, securities, etc., not to reconciliations, etc. What we're looking with the crypto, though, is uh, where SWIFT would have a store and forward system for most of its payment transactions, uh, where you need service level agreements that in a certain time I will do something, the payment turns up at a certain time during the day. Here we're looking at the new network styles, which allow instant, real-time movement of the funds and visibility of those funds as well so we would not have a situation where banks need to come back to you and say have my funds arrived uh it's three days later uh i need to find out or find query messages moving around the network there's nothing like that i don't believe ripple is going to replace swift ripple is one of the complementary networks which is going to allow those institutions who need real time to make use of that and I think um, we're also seeing that SWIFT are changing their, their network capability so that real time will be a possibility as, that, uh, as well. But we may also see Ripple XRP moving across the SWIFT network as a currency when we're perhaps using something like FX. It's Luna's walk time, and obviously I'm getting bossed around over here. I hope you have a very blessed day. Remember, 2024 is going to be an incredible year. Know what you're doing out here. Learn as much as you can and have some fun while you're doing it because when you're making money and it's printed out of thin air, there's no other way to make money, honestly. I'll see you guys next time. I've been Crypto Sensei. It's an honor to be here with you and grow with you. I'll see you next time.